I'd like to now talk to you about dipoles and net dipoles. Now a dipole is a difference in polarity that is brought about by a difference in electronegativity between two elements. And what we're looking at here is a delta plus and a delta minus, and these are partial charges where the delta minus ends up going on the more electronegative element, the delta plus goes on the less electronegative element. Now polarity represents the pool of electrons, since electrons are going to be more attracted to the electronegative element. Than the, uh, than the one that's less electronegative. So an, an arrow can be drawn, and this arrow is drawn parallel to the bond, with the arrow pointing towards the more electronegative element, and a line is put here on the less electronegative one that sort of represents a plus sign, if you like. So we're looking at the direction of electron pull, is what we're showing here. Now these can only be drawn along bonds, they cannot be drawn on non-bonding electron pairs because we need something on the end of the bond to be attracting electrons or on the other end to be more attractive to electrons. Electrons themselves are not polar. Alright, so let's take a look at some examples. Uh, two examples I've got here. We've got H, F and what we can do is we can always figure out which bond is more electronegative or sorry, which element is more electronegative by looking at the periodic chart. And whichever one is closest to fluorine on the periodic chart, generally that will be the one that will be considered to be more electronegative. So if you've got something like H, F, F is clearly more electronegative than H is. What that means is that uh, the arrow will be drawn along the H, F bond from the H to the F with the plus bit on the H. And if we're looking at OH, Again, clearly you can see that O is more electronegative than hydrogen is because it's closer to the fluorine. And again, we can see the effect that has on the, on the diagram. You can see that the arrow will be drawn from the H to the O. So the arrow always pushes towards the more electronegative of the two elements. I'm just going to draw a couple of pictures here just to show you the... Uh, to illustrate what's going on here. Let's say we've got something like CF. Now let's say we, uh, we go take a look at that on the periodic chart and you can see that out of C and F, F is going to be more electronegative. So what that means is that when we draw the electrons in this bond, since there's two electrons in a bond, C and EF but closer to the F, so what that means is that we're going to have a diff... So I'm just trying to draw the delta plus here. Here we go. Delta plus goes here. And the delta minus will go here. And that's just because there's more electron density closer to this end of the bond. So when we draw a dipole along the bond, we draw it parallel to the bond. And we draw the arrow pushing towards the more electronegative element. And we put a line down here to represent the positive end of the dipole. So that's all a dipole is. It's just a showing the direction of electron pull. All right, so that's for just one single bond. What we are going to look at now is what happens when we combine dipoles and we look at net dipoles. That's for compounds with more than one dipole in their system. I want you to consider some uh, examples here, and I've just pulled these examples uh, out of the ones that we looked at earlier. Let's take a look first of all at SO2. If I drew a, a dipole, the first thing I would want to do is draw dipoles along the bonds and I would first of all also want to see which out of O and S was more electronegative. So what I do is I go to the periodic chart, I see that S and O, O will be more electronegative than S will be because O is closer to F. and that means I can draw two dipoles along here and the dipoles will be drawn from the S towards the O in both instances. Now the dipoles will also have the same magnitude because I'm drawing them to the same atom. Now the other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to look at this and try and tell which direction the net dipole will be going in. Now the net dipole will be a combination of these two dipoles. Now we can do this by using the concepts of vector addition, which I'm not going to be 
looking too much at, but I do want to just be able to describe this to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and draw these. Um, that's what I was trying to do just now. Just draw this particular one and then draw this one. And what I'm doing is I'm doing vector addition, which means I'm adding these two vectors head to tail. So I'm taking the tail of this one and putting it on the head of this one. Now the net dipole then will go from the uh, tail of the first to the head of the second. So that's going to be the net dipole. And that's going to look like, uh, it's going to look more like this, sort of straight down through the center of the molecule. All right, so that's what we're going to see. If we try and add these dipoles together, we're going to get one dipole, which is a net dipole. And this is the only dipole we're going to see for the entire compound because it's the combination of these two. Now, it's, it, you don't have to go ahead and do this whole vector addition thing. What you can do is you can just look at the molecule and look at the, at the direction you think the dipoles are going to add up to. So if you've got a dipole pushing down in this direction and a dipole pushing down in this direction, the net dipole is going to lie directly in between them and go straight down in the same general direction as both of these arrows. I'm going to try and do that over here on this particular one as well. Let me change colors. And what I'm going to try and do is draw the, uh, draw the dipoles on this diagram here. And again, we're saying that this is an S and this is an O, so that dipole will be there. And this dipole will be here. So that's the individual dipoles for the, for the bonds. Now let's look at the net dipole. And the net dipole is going to go straight down here and in between these two oxygens. Now the lone pair of electrons here is not a bond so I do not draw a dipole along a lone pair of electrons. There needs to be something at the other end if we're going to have a dipole and there's nothing at the end of an electron pair. So we are only interested in uh, dipoles along bonds and that's it. So there, that's, what, that's where the dipole would be for that. Well let's take a look at water. Now with water Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so when I draw the dipole, I draw them directly parallel to the bonds with the arrows pointing towards the oxygen and the plus on the hydrogen end here. I'm going to draw those on the 3D model as well, remembering that the lone pairs, that's the pink ones here, do not get dipoles. All right, so I'm drawing the dipoles along the bonds, pointing towards the more electronegative element. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to draw a net dipole, and the net dipole is going to be pointing upwards and straight through the center of the molecule. So that's going to be the combination of these two here. All right, let's take a look at NH3. We'll do the same thing. Again, nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so each of those dipoles will point in towards the N. This one's a little bit harder to draw because it's kind of behind. Now what we're looking at here is all of these dipoles pointing in and up towards the nitrogen. The net dipole is going to run through the center of the molecule and point upwards in the same general direction as these dipoles here are pointing. Again, notice that we do not put a dipole on the lone pair of electrons. I could have also drawn the net dipole down here. It doesn't really matter where you draw the net dipole, as long as it's going in the right direction and has the right general size. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of others. This one is for SF4. We'll draw the draw the dipoles for that one. Now since fluorine is more electronegative than sulfur, this is the direction that we'll draw the, the dipoles.
And what we notice here is that we've got two dipoles that are running in the exact opposite direction. And what we know about that is that if we've got two dipoles that are the exact same size and they're running in the exact opposite direction, what's going to happen is they're going to cancel. And when they cancel, we're going to get a zero for that one. So really all we're considering is the net dipole of these two right here. And those are going to push in the general direction of the central atom and out in between these two atoms right here. So that's where the net dipole is going to be. Now let's take a look at this one. And in this case, we've got the same situation as we had before. We've got a, a dipole that's going up and a dipole that's going down. It's exactly the same size and the opposite direction. So these will end up cancelling. And all we're left with is this one. And that's our net dipole for that one. So it just runs directly along the remaining bond right here. Now not everything is going to have a dipole. Sometimes what's going to happen is the dipoles will cancel out. And that's going to happen in any case where we have no electron pairs on the bond. Right, so let's look at a couple of examples of ones that do not have any net dipole. The easiest one to look at first would be something like CO2. Now CO2 looks like this. And it has dipoles running in this direction. Oops. Let's draw that a little bit closer to C. And dipoles running in this direction. So we know that O is more electronegative than C. And since we've got two, two dipoles running in the exact opposite direction, what's going to happen is that they're going to cancel and the dipole is going to end up being zero. All right, let's look at another example, and that would be for something like a BF3. And again, we know that fluorine is more electronegative than boron, so the dipoles can be drawn directly along those bonds. Now what's going to happen here is that we can take these two dipoles and we can add them together. If we do that, we'll get this dipole here, which you see will run the exact opposite direction of the remaining dipole. So this one here is the sum of these two dipoles. It runs directly in between the, the FBF bond. And that means that if this will go, will go along with this, this will cancel and the dipole ends up being zero. So you can already see the pattern emerging here that when we've got just atoms attached to the central atom, what's going to happen is all the dipoles are going to end up cancelling. Still don't believe me? Take a look at something like this. This would be for SF6. Now SF6 is going to have an octahedral geometry. Just for the sake of uh, clarity, I won't put the line pairs on the Fs, but we know that the dipoles are all going to travel along the bonds here. And if you look at the situation, you can see we've got a dipole here that's traveling in the exact opposite direction of this one, so those two will cancel. We've got these two dipoles that are, that are exactly the same, traveling in the opposite direction. Those cancel. 
then you've got these two here, and those will cancel as well. So the dipole again ends up being zero. All right, so for any element that has just atoms around a central atom, the dipole will always be zero. All right, let's take a look at a summary of all the dipoles that we know for all the different geometries. Give it a second for this to come up. Here we go. And you can see them all here. And again, you see all the ones that have just X's, just atoms around the central atom, they all have a dipole of zero. Uh, this one here, the linear, the trigonal planar, the tetrahedral, the, um, the trigonal bipyramidal, and the octahedral all have a dipole of zero. Now there are some others that also have dipoles of zero as well, um, namely the linear one here with the three electron pairs. You can see that that's going to end up cancelling as well. The square planar also has a dipole of zero because all those end up cancelling too. We already went through and looked at the other ones that did have dipoles, the angular, where the dipole points in between. And this all assumes that X is more electronegative than A. And in those instances, the dipole will go straight through the center of the molecule in between the two X bonds. In the case of trigonal pyramidal, it goes down through the center of the molecule in between the X bonds right through the central atom. In the case of the angular, we've got the, again, the dipole goes straight out through the central element and in between the two X bonds. With the trigonal bipyramidal, uh, the one that turns into a seesaw, this one, the uh, the dipole goes in between these two AX bonds and these two bonds end up cancelling their dipoles. This one with the T-shaped, the uh, dipole goes along the AX bond and these two end up cancelling. And with this one, the, uh, the square pyramidal, you can see that all of these would end up cancelling and this one would end up having the dipole along the AX bond.